the government reckons it costs more to send a young person to prison than to Eton. And even then, the Justice Secretary, Ken Clark, wonders whether locking people up even works. So, what's the alternative? Well, we've been following a charity that takes the most challenging youngsters from Teesside out of their urban comfort zone to places like this. It's part of an intense plan to give them the confidence to keep to the straight and narrow. The charity insists it's cheaper than letting them drift into trouble. But ironically, in an age of austerity, it's vulnerable to government cutbacks. These people have slipped through the net. In many cases, authorities just can't deal with them anymore. For some, this training might be their best hope of staying out of jail. I've had a bad past and gone to trouble as a young teenager. I've tried so many options, but I haven't had any help until now. Fairbridge is a charity that's only based in the UK's poorest areas. There's one in Newcastle and one here in Middlesbrough. The charity says it gets great results, but it's really worried that cuts could spell the end not only for it, but could wreck lives of people who really need their help. Fairbridge will try and teach these young people skills to get jobs and live normal lives. They haven't all been in trouble, but many are vulnerable and at risk of falling into crime. We quite often get young people that will come in and they'll have the hood up, they'll have the earphones in, they don't want to engage in a conversation with you. Phil Morgan's a classic case. He has criminal convictions. Got kicked out my old school in Farnaby at the end of year nine. Martin, Martin, and then moved to a different <laughs> school. I was on there like year 10 and just nicked off at year 11. I was getting kicked out and that was how these ever in. On this film you will see the very first part of a, of, a, of a Fairbridge journey where you can see small improvements happening right at the beginning. The trick is of course to sustain that and to keep that momentum. So, to begin their journey, the new recruits will spend the next couple of days a million miles away from their daily lives in the Lake District. It doesn't matter what they've done in the past, it doesn't matter what's led them to this point. The fact is, they want to make a change. I'll get signals somewhere. Yeah, there we go. I have to send a text like this. I've got this. Welcome to your five star accommodation. It reeks in Guys, if you just keep oh, coming in. What's that? It's dead bodies, probably. Oh, I'm not staying here. I'm not staying here. But by the end of the couple of days, they're normally like, I don't want to go home. I don't want to go home. And they do walk to it big time. Whether they like it or not, they're on a gruelling schedule of activities that will not only tire them, but probably scare them too. It's like any journey really, isn't it? There's some hard bits and some easy bits. It is just the, the pressure release valve. Once they're out of Teesside, it's like they don't feel that pressure to keep up with their friends and, and family and stuff. Well done, Paddy. Good effort, Anna. Good effort. <laughs> that view is gorgeous. I used to pinch cars, pinch water bikes, but yeah, I, I stopped that and start to settle down. Most of the people I have around me and when, I, when I'm back home are just all idiots, like getting into trouble and like dragging me down with them. Zoe's got personal struggles that could lead to greater problems if they're not addressed. There's no way you're getting out of eating satire about raw chocolate alone because I don't eat food. I used to wear five stone when I was 17. God, that's not good mate at all. Mm -hmm. I'm worried about things and there's nothing I can do about it. I internalise and stop eating and self-harm and stuff. There's a little cur crevice just at the right hand side of your mate. It's all about teamwork and building confidence. The group's bonding well until some issues boil over. I'm not sleeping in the beds. I wouldn't dare. They're perfect mattresses. I'd rather sleep on the floor than sleep in them. The no, you thing. Be fine on the mattress. I've been asleep in the last two days. No. Don't get hungry anymore, because I don't eat. Part, part of horrible, though. I'm in the middle of quitting smoking cannabis and that as well. So, that's baffling my head. 
I was smoking it that often that I needed to smoke it to go to sleep. And then now I just can't sleep at all. Uh, I'm going back to college in September, and if I'm still like this, it's a waste of time. I'll just end up dead before I even go back to college. I keep going the way I'm going. Middlesbrough has some pretty bleak figures. It has the eighth worst crime rate of any council area in England, which ends up costing us all an awful lot of money. How do you break the cycle? The government thinks prison is expensive and for most offenders doesn't work. So could there be a cheaper, more effective solution? The cost of a prison, for example, to put a young person in a young offenders institution is nearly £60,000 a year. We're saying for, for less than £4,000 we can keep that young person out of uh, a young offenders institution um, and we can get them contributing to society once more. Ali Crossley is from the Centre for Social Justice, a think tank which helps the government come up with policy ideas. It's a big day for Fairbridge. If her visit goes well, she could recommend they get more funding. The most important thing is speaking to you guys, not all of these guys who are like chief executives and, you know, all of the big bosses. I want to hear what you think. They need to sort out the priorities in different crimes. Yeah, I've been in jail about four times. If you're good for six weeks and that, and like, the government gives you like Xboxes and PlayStation, but yeah. that's not good, is it? You know what I mean? You're in jail for a reason, aren't you? What do you think's made the difference? Come to Yeah. Excellent Dean Fenwick's been through the court system and says he wouldn't have committed his crime if he'd had more support beforehand. The man was a cry for help because nobody was listening. There was really no help at all. Nobody was getting involved in me at all. Nobody wanted to know me. And it's like, if it wasn't for what I did, I'd be still in square one. I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't have a clue what I'd be doing. And Fairbridge's way of getting them out of destructive cycles is to get them to face their fears. Liam is petrified of heights. So if you walk towards Fletch. Feet a little bit wider apart. OK, keep looking up. Keep looking up, will you? Yeah, because you've just done the hardest bit there, mate. Yeah, you have, honestly. That is the hardest bit. I really do not like it. What was that, Liam? I don't like it. No, you're doing so well, honestly, mate. If you weren't, I wouldn't say it. Uh. You know, once they look back on that, you know, in a couple of days, in a week, it'll be something that it changes them as a person, it gives them confidence, it shows that they've got the courage, it shows that they can do things that they never thought were possible. I mean, we had some really powerful um, reactions from the app sale today. There we go. Hey, how was that? Good. High five! Yes, yes, you did amazingly well. The bravado goes, you know, this big guy attitude is totally stripped away and you're dealing with the person. I felt safe when I had contact with the wall, but as soon as I lost contact with the wall, I didn't feel safe. Do you know what, do the activity is the buzz, it's what's taking you to get here. Far, far more important. Last night, for the first time in days, Phil had five hours sleep and finally, He's eating. Last time I had a proper meal was about four and a half months ago. Time to head home. A difficult road lies ahead, not just for vulnerable young people, but also the charities that help them. In tough times, will people be prepared to invest in groups like yours when it's easy just to slash the money completely? Well, unfortunately, if, if that, that money is slashed, then um, there's no hope for these, these young people that we're engaging. We work with some of the most marginalised young people from across Teesside. Every youngster that we have across our doors has something that we believe is of value. We see these people as a missed opportunity. Six weeks have passed since the young people we followed started working with Fairbridge. Liam's back in college. So what do you want to be? What do you want to do with your life today? Uh, kitchen fair. And do you think with Fairbridge has got involved with you, has your life changed because of that, do you think, or not? It has, a, it has a bit. It's got me more active. It's got me to start doing things more, like playing rugby again. Are you a bit more optimistic now? I am a bit. So you look a bit different to when we saw you last. Yeah. <laughs> so what's going on now? What's, uh, what's changed since we saw you back in July? 
getting an apprenticeship and that's all right. What will you be doing for that? Getting an Are you excited by that? Yeah. Are you going to hack it, do you think? Will you make it? Yeah, of Rachel, my friend, she was with Fairbridge. Now she's got herself a job. So she's getting more where she wanted to be. Fairbridge is like a home, really, I think. And as for Dean, he's now even crewing on the charity's own tall ship. Fairbridge has been his lifeline. It's just given the young people an opportunity to show themselves that they can do stuff that they never thought they could do. In tough times, can we afford to put money into schemes like Fairbridge? Let me know what you think. Add your voice to my blog at bbc.co.uk slash chrisjackson.